Welcome back, everybody, to the Birdies and Bourbon Show. Uh, so I'm excited to have Brad King, CEO of Stitch Golf, on with us today. Uh, before I reached out to Brad and said, "Hey, can we get you on the show?" and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into the SL2 that I'm carrying uh, a little later on. Uh, I've been a Stitch fan. Uh, I've been a Stitch bag carrier now for probably three years. I want to say four, but I, I may be off on the number there. But it, at least three that I can think of. Outstanding stuff that y'all are doing over at Stitch. Uh, looking forward to getting into kind of the car influence and some of the designs you've got going on, Brad. We're going to talk a little about um, about your and Charlie's relationship uh, back in high school and your coaching days. Um, Charlie and I, uh, Charlie Bergwin, who's the founder of Stitch, we we like to say that our relationship all started with a live wedge. <laughs> and uh, I was his high school golf coach back in the early 90s. And um, we would play practice rounds and Charlie would have a ball that was on the fringe or the, you know, the collar of the green and short-sided. And instead of putting it through this really tightly cut fringe, he would pull out the lob wedge and try and hit a little 10-foot uh, flop shot. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say uh, it was a challenge as a coach. Uh, but now that we're all grown up, um, we don't have those challenges anymore. We, we don't use the lob wedge. We pull the putter out. <laughs> who, who uh, Tom Watson, what do you say? Uh, when you can putt, putt, right? So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt about it. But that's how we all got started. Uh, I was um, I was coach at, at uh, Apex High School with um, another uh, coach. I played golf with the principal of the high school. And he said, we've got these really good players coming in. Um, we've got a, a, a lady golf coach. She's awesome, but I'm afraid these guys are going to be kind of a lot to handle and love for you to get involved and help out. So I volunteered my time and um, met Charlie. And uh, we won a couple of conference championships and nice. had a good time uh, coaching those guys. And then, uh, you know, Charlie wasn't really a part of my life until we'll call it five and a half years ago, where I bumped into him one day at lunch and he told me about this head cover company that he had. Uh, he congratulated me on the sale. I had an office products company that I had sold to Staples and uh, was just doing M&A advisory work. Uh, and um, he told me about this this company that he had making leather head covers. And interestingly enough, I said, well, OK, great. Congratulations. Good luck with that. And I got home and went to my golf bag and realized I was carrying a stitch head cover <laughs> and didn't know it was his company. So crazy. It was. Uh, it started a series of conversations where he was picking my brain for for business uh, ideas and guidance. And I asked him a question one day. I said, "How would you like to build a like a golf brand? Like really, let's go for it. More than head covers. Kind of get out of the um, what I would call the arts and crafts business. But let's let's build a real golf brand." And uh, he was keen on the idea. Put together a group of investor partners, and we bought the company and basically recapitalized it uh, just over four years ago. And we set out to build Stitch, the golf brand that you know today, that is really more known for products, um, golf bags, head covers, this whole concept of dress your game. Uh, we like to talk about the guy that shows up at the golf course, driving the nice car, dressed the right way. And then he pops the trunk and, you know, chaos ensues. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, Brad. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think that guy is on this show with us. Tonight. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Dan for sure. Oh yeah, that's right. Sure. Come on, Dan. <laughs> fix that, man. Oh, that's right. That's right. Absolutely <laughs> fix that. But Good yeah, stuff. so that theme really set the stage for us to figure out that people really cared about what their golf bag looked like. They just didn't know how to dress it properly. Sure. And so we set out to teach them how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and. Obviously, today, golf bags is the central part of our brand strategy where we lead off with golf bags. Um, it was interesting, and I'll tell you a funny story, guys. So we went to the first, I went to my first PGA show in 2017. We had not bought the company yet, but Charlie and I had been working on the creation of the first golf bag, the SL1. And they showed up the night before the show, four of them, four different colors of the SL1 prototypes. And... We've got our head cover displays. We've got our four SL1 golf bags. And we've got this really neat travel bag that we created called the UGB, the ultimate garment bag, which uh, is still our number one seller. Mm. And all anybody wanted to talk about at the show were the golf bags and the travel bag. They didn't really want to talk about head covers anymore. 
which mm. really was kind of the final straw to move <laughs> forward with this business marriage where uh, we proved ourselves that people would recognize Stitch as something more than just uh, a head cover company. Uh, how many people have just uh, like emptied their travel bag and reloaded the, the ultimate garment bag and just tossed their other bag right away, right? So. Happens all the time. <laughs> Happens all the time. You know, one of the most rewarding things is, um, you know, going through the airport and seeing people carrying your bag. Sure. And, and actually seeing people carrying a multitude of our products. It's really incredible. Back then, that's all we had was one bag. But now we've got obviously quite a bit. And here you go. You've got it up on the, on the screen. Yeah. Was, was there hesitation? So it, it sounded like it was a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy jump to, hey, we got to do golf bags because the money's there. The dollars are there. The, the, the buying market is there. I mean, was the garment bag, was it also just like a no brainer? Like, yes, we're going to do that. Or was there some hesitancy on, I don't know if it's going to work or not? Well, it, there was a book, uh, a bag by a, a company called Hook and Albert. Sure. And I remember yeah. thinking it was a cool bag. You've probably heard of that brand before. It was a very cool br uh, bag. It was a garment bag that converted into a duffel. It had three zippers. And so we thought, well, what could you do to take that bag and make it even more efficient? Better. Like get rid of two zippers. So uh, that's where it came from, to be very honest with you. It was not the combination of a duffel and a garment bag. It was more make it more efficient by eliminating all the zippers. Yeah, sure. And speaking of innovation, we, we've we got, um, I'd love to like break stories here on uh, Birdies and Bourbon, which I won't do. Um, but we've got. <laughs> oh, no, no, you can. Cool you can. Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we've got some crazy cool products and product development. We have a product development meeting every Wednesday. We've got a team of folks, designers, design engineers, uh, and supply chain folks that are constantly working on product ideas. And we've got some of the coolest stuff that we're getting ready to launch for uh, 2022 and 23. It's just just going to blow your mind. You know, I, I'm a minimalist per se when it comes to like the golf bag. Like I don't want the big fancy, the big fat bag that I can't get in my trunk of my car or wherever. Or when I go somewhere where it's a carry only course and maybe you've got a caddy, you got to unload everything and put everything back in somewhere else. So I, I appreciate it. And number two, the affordability. And I've, I won't bring the names up, but I've, I've bought in my pre, you know, in the past, I mean, I've, I've used other golf carry bags and, you know, and I've always gravitated towards I'll call it, I'm going to still call you bespoke. I don't know if you, if you want to sit it. in that, if you want to sit in that category or not, but I, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's still, uh, I think you've surpassed boutique, but I think it's unique in a sense that it's definitely not cookie cutter that, uh, that the only difference is the logo on the side of the bag, which by, which here's the other thing is, I don't know why you haven't done it yet. And I know what the, you've got some tour pros carrying the bags and obviously, you know, it's, it's, that's an advertising platform where you have to do that. When you look at a stitch golf bag, there's a little small, I, you know, I should have had, I should have had the bag. I could just be holding it up. You went to look at me, but there's a little logo that's orange, a little orange rubber cover. That's about this big, about as big as like an eye. Yeah, there you go. It, not very big at all. So you're not really recognizing it from the logo of the golf bag. You did uh, appreciate the custom, uh, custom initial cover that I got on there. So people know who it is. I appreciate that. That's but called I, the signature magnetic ingot. <laughs> you knew I would have never got that right. So that's why I was kind of teeing <laughs> okay. you up for that. But, you know, but, but I, I really appreciate that in, in the sense that you're trusting your unique design to speak for itself and people can kind of go, ah, that's a stitch bag. You don't need stitch written down the side of the bag for somebody or even better. I think it's where somebody goes, Hey man, what the hell kind of bag is that? Like, there's no name. What is that? You know? And, and that's what I got. So I got the, uh, I got the blue with the, uh, the camo pockets on it. Yeah. And, and I don't know, uh, I got two weeks ago maybe. And people were like, Hey man, where'd you get that bag? So, and of course, you know, we, we, we go down the episode and it's like, if you don't like that, if that's not really your, you know, your jam there, there's a solid black. So, you know, you diff, a lot of different color schemes. And if you want to share a little about why are you electing to keep things? So I'm going to call it minimalist, even though I think you've really done a nice job with the upgrades of the SL2 and some different locations of some things on there. I think it was a hell of an upgrade. 
Well, thanks. I'll go to the brand elements first, and then I'll go to the upgrades. Um, so with regard to the brand elements, it was not an accident. It was all by design that we would not flash a big billboard in your face uh, that through the product design, uh, the aesthetics of it, uh, we love to we love to design with this principle called the Maya principle. Uh, it's where you design something that's familiar that has an aesthetic aha. And so all of our products have that in them. Um, and part of, you know, that um, simplicity of how we brand our products is it's more about a consistency. Um, if you can recognize a stitch product, either by the product design or by that little orange indicator, we're good with that. If we have to flash a billboard up there to tell you that it's a, I won't name the competitors. If we have to do that, then the product isn't innovative enough. And so we like to lean on innovation and we feel like we're all about innovation. Brad King, uh, if there's anything else you want to say, sir, uh, it's your show. So you, uh, you share away, man. Guys, look, I'm grateful for being asked to be on. It's really cool. I love your setup, your bar setup. I love your collection. I've been studying some of the bottles I see in the background. I've got my own collection. It's not quite as uh, beautifully displayed as yours, but um, no, I'm proud to be associated with great folks like yourself. I'm thankful for having you as customers and thankful that you guys are supporting uh, golf and giving golfers something to listen to and just, uh, um, you know, to really pursue your passion, which is playing golf and making birdies and drinking great whiskey, which uh, I think is a great combination. So proud to be a part of uh, your show. 